my name is uh, Aina Dasri, and I'm uh, working for Toshiba European MSI Design and Engineering Center in uh, Germany. I'm uh, taking care of uh, mobile SSC uh, product recognition and whatnot. And I'm especially taking care of uh, Unipower later application. So I'm going to give you a short overview uh, on the Unipower working group. So Unipower, so what is Unipower at all? So, Unipro is coming from Unified Protocol. Uh, why Unified? So Unified is because uh, the protocol is actually application agnostic. So don't care if you transport uh, video data, uh, whatever processor intercommunication data, uh, it's we don't care about it. You can transport everything. So you can just see it as a pipe that never high bandwidth data communication. Uh, between two peer devices. So Unipro is uh, actually uh, using two kinds of uh, uh, physical interface. It is using uh, uh, DeFi or MFi. And when using the uh, Unipro with DeFi interface, we call it a Unipro D. And when using the uh, uh, Unipro with the MFi interface, we call it a Unipro M. So this is why you see everywhere here written Unipro. Um, so this diagram shows an example of uh, uh, usage of uh, Unipro interface in a uh, mobile uh, system. So the first uh, application uh, that uh, is going to be using uh, Unipro is uh, uh, interface uh, to mass storage devices. Uh, this is also a UFS interface uh, which is being defined by uh, JDEC. Uh, other kind of uh, interfaces uh, that are going to be used, going to use uh, Unipro are uh, TSI2, which is a next generation uh, display interface, or CSI3, next generation uh, uh, camera interface, also using Unipro. Um, also, you can see here uh, a Unipro link between uh, application processor and uh, coprocessor. So, for example, uh, extending the capability of the application processor with additional uh, uh, features, maybe graphical features or something like that. Um, what is uh, not really seen on the picture but actually is there is that each of these uh, devices may contain a uh, Unipro switch because Unipro is able to support a network architecture and in that way any device which is connected uh, to the Unipro network is able to communicate with any other device. So in that case we could have, for example, the coprocessor uh, going through a Unipro switch, which is integrated into the application processor, to go, for example, to the GPT, which is another application of Unipro, like a gigabit trace, enabling uh, uh, test and debugging uh, over a single connector of multiple SOC, or, for example, having um, application processor accessing the mass storage device via this interface. So in that case, we would have, of course, only mass storage device only here and not here. So, but make it uh, uh, seamless. Yeah. Um, other kind of application that uh, can use Unipro are uh, wireless uh, high bandwidth uh, communication like wireless LAN, uh, wireless gigabit, or transfer jet. Or using Unipro. And this uh, yellow box can also be uh, Unipro switch where uh, each of these uh, uh, wireless interface is able to access, for example, mass storage or the display or whatever. So, who are we and uh, what are we are doing? So, uh, the goal of the Unipro working group is uh, to develop an open industry standard for a layered protocol. And the following main feature that we are supporting is, of course, high bandwidth. That's one important thing. Uh, another very important thing, it has to be application agnostic. So as I said, uh, we don't care about the type of data. We can support several applications. Uh, we give support for networking, so that each device can communicate with other peer devices in the network. And uh, last but not least, uh, to enable forward compatibility. Uh, this means that uh, when uh, people are designing a Unipro version 1.5 uh, device uh, nowadays, they are sure that they will be able to reuse 
the same co component with the version 1.5 device in a, a Unicode version 2.0 uh, architecture with, in a network architecture of version 2.0. Uh, another important task for the uh, working group is to maintain the documentation. Um, so we are doing a specification in uh, two ways. So we have a textual specification, which is quite sort of usual what people tend to usually have at the table. But uh, we also, in addition to that, we have a formal normative reference model described in uh, SDL language. And both documents are the specification of Unicode. Of course, we maintain uh, frequently asked questions, so there are a lot of questions about Unicode. Um, and we maintain a uh, test specification. And this is also a very important part because this document describes uh, what are the test items required for conformance testing. And of course, also we have to maintain a roadmap about which Unicode feature is going to come when and by which version. Uh, 